Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. So glad that you could join us today to um, gain some more no knowledge about the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And we're calling this the Sustainable Development Goals for 101 for community foundations. Uh, we do have some non-community foundation people on our call today, which is great. Uh, just acknowledging that some of the content will relate directly to our work at, um, in the communities as, as a funder and collaborator and supporter. Uh, but uh, we welcome all who are here to learn more about um, the UN Sustainable Goals and how it can impact our work. So next slide please. My name is Cindy Lindsay and I'm the Director of Learning for Community Foundations of Canada and uh, so I'm just moderating the conversation today. Just a couple of reminders, uh, especially if you're joining us for the first time. We have everyone on mute except for the presenters um, and so you can hear us but we can't hear you and this just helps avoid any background noises and interference. We are recording today's webinar, so and the recording will be available in our resource library following today's uh, presentation. And we do ask that for the best webinar experience to close all other applications and make sure that your volume is nice and loud so you can hear everything. Next slide. Um, and as I said, we've got everyone on mute. Uh, hopefully there's no need to have you on camera today. Um, much and all, we'd love to see your lovely faces, uh, but make sure that your camera is turned off. And the way we want you to get the most experience out of this webinar is to ask questions. And that's, this is the best way we can learn. And so there is a chat function at the bottom of your screen. And uh, um, so it's a group chat. So if you have a particular question, please fire it into that chat box. And when we have a moment, we will jump in and answer those questions either at the end or if it relates directly to a particular topic. If we don't get to all the questions by the end, we can certainly follow up with you and, um, and, and deal with those questions one-on-one. -on -one. So um, we're ready to go. And it's my pleasure to turn the presentation over to my colleague, JP Bervortz, uh, who is the Vice President at Community Foundations of Canada and is a real um, champion around the, the Sustainable Development Goal work. So I'm going to turn it over to you, JP. Great, Cindy. Thank you. And hello, everyone. Um, again, as Cindy mentioned, my name is JP. I'm on the staff team at Community Foundations of Canada and uh, really delighted to be part of the conversation today as we kick off a new year and a new decade uh, talking about the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, so as Cindy mentioned, uh, this is a 101 webinar today. Uh, and so we're really going to cover the basics. Uh, and for the first half of the webinar, really focus on some key questions around what the Sustainable Development Goals are, uh, why they matter, uh, and at a high level, how Canada is doing five years into this, uh, into this uh, initiative. Uh, and then for the second half of the webinar, we're going to go a little bit deeper onto how community foundations can get involved. Uh, we're going to share a couple of specific examples uh, from across the country. Uh, and then we'll leave you with uh, both a number of resources that are great guides, whether you're getting started or looking to deepen your work in this space, um, as well as uh, a couple of reminders about some up and coming uh, learning opportunities through CFC so you can continue uh, a discussion and, uh, and a, pr a process of learning around the sustainable development goals. So to get started, the important question, what are the sustainable development goals or SDGs as you'll hear me call them throughout uh, the presentation today? So uh, in September of 2015, Canada and 192 other countries around the world adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which is a really ambitious 15-year plan uh, that envisions a world of peace and prosperity, free of poverty and environmental degradation, where no one is left behind. Um, the launch of the SDGs brought to conclusion uh, what's actually become one of the most robust community consultation processes ever undertaken at a global level. Uh, over 8 million people were engaged globally uh, and, and brought together a list of uh, over 100 recommendations about the things that they thought mattered most in their communities. Um, that list of recommendations was woven together uh, through a pretty robust process and resulted in what you see here on the screen, which is uh, 17 uh, interconnected and ambitious sustainable development goals. Uh, now, over the first five years of this agenda, we've seen pretty significant momentum build in Canada and internationally. Uh, with governments, civil society organizations, academic institutions, private sector companies, uh, and many others aligning their individual work to this shared vision. Um, and I think that that's just a really early signal of how different the SDGs are from some of the other global agendas that have come before it. So to quickly illustrate how different the SDGs are, I want to look back at what many see as their predecessor, the Millennium Development Goals. 
um, and just some four key ways in which the SDGs are actually quite fundamentally different from the Millennium Development Goals. So first, first with respect to focus, uh, the Millennium Development Goals focused largely on developing countries. Um, the SDGs adversely are really as much a domestic and a community agenda as they are an international agenda. We often say what happens uh, in Dartmouth matters as much as what happens in Dakar under the SDGs. Um, they're also just a much more robust framework uh, and one that recognizes the complexity and the interconnectivity of many of the issues that we're working on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and one of the ways to just see how much more uh, complex uh, but also comprehensive the SDGs are is looking at the indicator coverage. So the Millennium Development Goals had only eight goals, uh, 21 targets and 60 indicators. Uh, the SDGs have 17 goals, 169 targets and 232 indicators. Um, but what's as important as the number of targets and indicators is the way that we use them. So as we know, Canada is often at the top of many international uh, uh, indices, um, really based on this aggregate picture of Canada as a, a healthy place to live, a prosperous country, one that is safe with access to great education. Um, however, I think we know that all of us on this call that this is only the case for some people living in Canada and not for all people living in Canada. Um, and the SDGs really requires us to look beyond this aggregate picture of prosperity to ensure that no one is left behind. So if we fail to meet any of these 17 goals for any single group, we actually fail to meet them as a country. Um, finally, uh, who's responsible for the SDGs? And this is one of the biggest shifts between uh, some of the previous international programs like the Millennium Development Goals. Um, under the Millennium Development Goals, this was really developed for uh, as a bilateral and multilateral agenda. Uh, the SDGs, however, are, are really uh, meant to activate and engage a whole range of stakeholders uh, from private sector to philanthropy to government um, to uh, unlock capital from those stakeholders and investments from those stakeholders. Uh, and as an agenda, it really actively recognizes uh, the role of new and innovative social finance models like impact investing as a key part of the solution. So this isn't really something that um, the International uh, Development Division of a given government is required to finance. It's something that we're all really thinking about at a comprehensive level and at a community level, and we're all responsible to help move forward. So that's what they are. Um, now I want to speak a little bit to why we think the SDGs might matter. Uh, and quite simply, they actually break down a lot of the traditional silos that we experience in our day-to-day -day work. Uh, they break down silos between places. Uh, again, they're a universal agenda and they're a whole of society agenda, which means that they apply to all communities and all countries, regardless of what uh, their traditional development status might be. Uh, they break down silos between definitions. Uh, so they, they really seek to build a robust understanding of what it means to be sustainable through an environmental, an economic, and a social lens. Um, they break down uh, silos between issues. So again, while there are 17 colored boxes on the screen, um, the, the indicator framework really paints a picture of a set of goals that are integrated and indivisible. Um, at a government level, they break down uh, silos between departments uh, and require something called policy coherence, which really means that governments uh, are meant to move together and that one single department or ministry shouldn't be advancing a policy that actually hinders progress um, towards the SDGs with respect to what another department might be uh, working toward. Um, they're a multi-sector agenda. And actually, we saw uh, some early foundations and some early private sector uh, organizations as being some of the first movers in this space, uh, even before um, the government started to really ramp up their own engagement around the SDGs. Uh, and so it, it's, it's a really great way to help connect and build relationships and partnerships across sectors. Uh, and, and finally, uh, they, the uh, leave no one behind mantra of the SDGs really requires an inclusive and participatory approach uh, from all members of society, and in particular, uh, from those that are often most adversely affected from uh, the issues that the SDGs are trying to advance. So really, really simply, and if there's kind of one message to take from uh, today's webinar, the SDGs are a shared language. Uh, and again, they're one that Canada and 193 other countries around the world uh, have adopted. So next, I want to talk a little bit uh, about how Canada uh, is doing. Uh, and that's, that's a, a complex question. Uh, it's one we don't have a perfect answer to yet. And it's one that would probably need its own webinar to go deeper into. Uh, but to give you a really quick look, I wanted to share a section of the 2019 Canada dashboard uh, that's provided by the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, which currently ranks Canada as 20th out of 156 countries in our response to the SDGs. 
Um, I've got the source uh, link at the bottom there, and we're happy to share the webinar slides after the webinar um, uh, because there will be a number of links and sources throughout. Uh, but if you take a really quick look here, just based on the number of orange and uh, red icons on the screen, um, at a very high level, you can get a sense of the fact that there's actually a lot of work to do, um, even in the Canadian context. Um, and so the color of the icons themselves indicate how we're doing now, uh, and the colors of the arrows indicate the trend line that we're on over the next decade uh, based on uh, current indicators of progress, um, financing commitments, and policy commitments. Uh, and just as a couple of really quick examples of, of really where there are some very substantive gaps, I took some data from uh, around 2015 when the SDGs were being adopted by Canada and others. Um, uh, and just to again show you where some of these gaps are, in 2015, almost 5 million Canadians or one in seven uh, people lived in poverty. This included over a million children. Uh, in 2014, women reported over 1.2 million violent incidences, including physical assault, sexual assault, and robbery. Uh, in 2017, there were at least 100 drinking water advisories in First Nations communities that had been in place for more than a year. Uh, and between 1990 and 2015, Canada's greenhouse gas emissions increased by 18%. But there is some good news as well. Uh, and that's that while we were slow uh, as a country to, to get started with the SDGs, we're actually starting to catch up quite quickly. Um, in 2018, in April of 2018, the Auditor General released a report that really identified some key gaps in Canada's response. Uh, and really since that report's launched, we've seen um, a lot of momentum build. Um, on the left side, uh, some of the dots um, speak to some of the actions that have been taken by government. Uh, so Canada has submitted its first voluntary national review. Uh, and so this is really a comprehensive report uh, to the United Nations that says how Canada is doing and what uh, its intentions are moving forward throughout the course of this agenda. Uh, budget 2018 allocated resources uh, both internally to help fill some of the, um, the gaps with respect to our understanding of how we're doing, some of the data gaps that existed uh, within Statistics Canada, uh, and it also created space for the creation of an SDG unit uh, inside ESDC that's really help, uh, helping to support both the internal uh, kind of policy coherence and cooperation across government departments, um, but is also leading on national consultation processes. Uh, the first one came to conclusion this past year, uh, and it's expected that uh, ongoing consultation will take place throughout the duration of this agenda. Um, it released toward a national strategy, which is a precursor document to Canada's uh, National Sustainable Development Goals strategy, uh, which we expect to launch this year. Uh, it rolled out the first uh, tranche of an SDG funding program. Uh, and we've also seen a, a data portal, which I'll speak to in a moment, emerge, which is actually helping to surface all kinds of new uh, and soon to be disaggregated at the community level uh, data about how we're doing with respect to the SDGs. What's um, maybe more exciting even than some of the um, momentum that we've seen with respect to government is that in the absence of a response in 2016 and 17, uh, a lot of different uh, organizations and networks started to ask questions about the SDGs and started to really uh, develop the infrastructure that's needed to, at a community level, uh, help us move forward on these goals. Uh, from uh, academia, we saw SDSN Canada launch uh, in, uh, in Waterloo, and they've been helping to connect students and academics uh, across the country uh, around the SDGs. Uh, Alliance 2030 has been uh, a, a great journey so far that I'll again speak to shortly. That's brought together civil society, uh, private sector organizations, government departments, community organizations uh, to learn about the SDGs uh, and, and to help coordinate a more uh, collective and cohesive response. The UN Global Compact Network in Canada has done great work to support private sector in understanding uh, what the SDGs mean, not just with respect to their engagement in community, but with respect to their business practices. Um, the Waterloo Global Science Initiative has done some really exceptional early convening work to really help all of these organizations understand what a community-driven approach to the SDGs looks like. Uh, and of course, we've seen uh, community foundations uh, across the country and communities large and small in a lot of different ways think about, explore, and adopt the SDGs. Um, another example of some of this early momentum uh, came from a roadshow that uh, Community Foundations of Canada, alongside uh, some of our partners from uh, the philanthropic sector, uh, Environment Funders Canada and PFC, uh, as well as leaders from the international development community and government hosted in 2017 and 18, um, which really just went out to communities to ask some pretty basic questions. Have you heard about these things? If you've heard about them, do you think they're relevant to your work? If you think they're relevant to your work, um, how might they impact how you're collecting data or measuring your impact? Uh, and we were actually really surprised by the response to this workshop. 
Um, 89% of participants and those that completed surveys uh, throughout the roadshow agreed that the SDGs were a useful framework for advancing their work. Uh, Two-fifths were already starting to collect SDG-aligned uh, data, uh, and 94% saw this as a valuable conversation that they wanted to stay involved in. Um, and this really kind of paints what, uh, what has been called the hidden mosaic, which was that so many organizations in Canada were really actively working on the SDGs uh, and simply not talking to one another about it. Uh, and this is perhaps best exemplified by a really fantastic initiative that's being led by the British Columbia Council for International Cooperation. Um, if you visit map.bccic.ca, um, they have plotted the work of over 11 uh, and a half thousand organizations that are working on the SDGs uh, across the country. And so this is a really easy way to just get a sense of what's happening in your own community, who's doing what, um, and it, it's again just uh, painted an even more robust picture of how much momentum uh, there is around the SDGs, uh, even in you know the early days where a few of us were actually connecting and collaborating around this agenda. Um, lastly, we're starting to fill the data gap. Um, so I mentioned that in 2018, Statistics Canada got the mandate to really help center a lot of its work around the SDGs. Um, this is a graph that's a little bit old now. It's probably a year and a half old, but on it you'll see the number of indicators that exist uh, under each sustainable development goal. Uh, and then in, in the solid colored line, how many indicators Canada is actually uh, able to access uh, reliable data on. And so as you can see outside of goal four, quality education, there was actually a pretty substantial gap in our own understanding of, of how we were doing at a national level, let alone at, uh, at a community level. Um, and just to paint a picture of what this looks like, um, I went to the SDG Knowledge Platform, and again, the link is there at the bottom if you really want to dive into the indicators and sub-indicators of the SDGs. Um, and uh, I took a look at two specific uh, indicators to just see how Canada was doing currently in monitoring its progress on these targets. So goal 11 is sustainable uh, cities and communities. And here we've got two, uh, two uh, indicators, one looking at um, the impact of cities on the environment uh, through metrics looking at air quality and waste management, and the other looking at public access to safe, inclusive, uh, accessible, green and public spaces. Uh, so if we flip here to um, the graph that's generated on the SDG Data Hub, you can see that for goal 11.6 um, on waste management and clean air, we actually have the data we need and we're tracking our progress there. Um, but again, I mentioned that uh, Statistics Canada is very quickly filling the data gap and so in 11.7 here, which is about accessible, safe, and inclusive green and public spaces, um, there's both a process underway for one of the targets to explore existing data sources that uh, are reliable that we can bring into the indicator framework, uh, or 11.7.2, uh, 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 that there's actually new indicators under development. Um, and so this is, you know, for those that, that love data, this is exciting because it's actually creating uh, new opportunities to access uh, data about our community that simply didn't exist in Canada before. Uh, and this is a space that isn't just being led by Statistics Canada uh, through the consultation process, um, through um, some analysis of the vital signs work that many community foundations are undertaking across the country, uh, and through the participation of many other organizations in civil society, academia, and elsewhere that are collecting data actively, uh, a lot of these gaps are starting to now be filled. Um, so now I want to flip to why any of this matters, and I'm going to speak to this specifically with a community foundation lens, um, but I think at, at a higher level, uh, regardless of where you work in civil society or elsewhere, um, there might be a couple of points here that are relevant to you. So first of all, the SDGs uh, are really effective at helping to strengthen our community knowledge and data work. So, so much of the work of community foundations is rooted in community knowledge and data uh, that they, they gather and collect through their community uh, and really help make visible through initiatives like Vital Signs. Uh, and the SDGs are really allowing that work to plug into a bigger picture uh, and can allow us to not only track uh, these goals, but to track them in a comparative way across communities and to help feed that data into, uh, again, a national picture and an international picture of how we're doing. Um, the SDGs can also be really effective in helping to strengthen local and global learning opportunities. So I think as a community foundation movement in Canada, uh, we've collectively benefited so much over the last number of years from the increasingly strong ties we have with one another uh, to share knowledge, to share resources and learnings, to collaborate on, on central initiatives. Um, and we know that in the community foundation world, there's close to 1900 community foundations globally um, uh, from whom we have a lot to learn, who are interested in learning and hearing from us. Uh, and we know that many of our 
counterparts, because this is again an international framework, uh, are also choosing to align their work around the SDGs. So it presents a, a kind of a unique opportunity in the future through this shared language uh, for us to, to learn from one another, learn from our approaches, and potentially to even collaborate in different ways. The SDGs are also a great frame to foster collaboration and to help engage your community. So from a partnership perspective, um, we've seen pretty strong signals that a lot of companies across Canada are starting to explore or align uh, their work around the SDGs. Uh, and over the next 10 years, uh, we anticipate that that momentum is only gonna continue to grow. You know, similarly, uh, and originally outside of Canada, we, we really started to see the SDGs as a framework that was being adopted by municipal governments to again, track their progress to understand uh, areas uh, of opportunity and of gaps um, it, within the shared framework. Um, and we started to see that trend emerge in Canada as well, where there are a growing number of municipalities that are looking at the SDGs as a, as a primary framework uh, for their work. Uh, with respect to donor engagement, the SDGs might not resonate with everybody, uh, but we also think that it's a tool that some will find highly appealing. Um, it can be a great uh, vehicle to help think about crafting new field of interest funds. It's one that we're seeing resonate with uh, a growing number of millennial donors or those with a global outlook. Uh, and there was a great report by Charity AIDS Foundation, uh, Charity Aid Foundation America last year that looked at the value of the SDGs at engaging donors and community leaders from the diaspora community. Um, and finally, the SDGs really raises the bar for all of us, uh, not just in philanthropy, um, with its mandate to leave no one behind uh, and forces a focused discussion on what it might look like for communities and for community foundations to leave no one behind. Uh, what are the governance, the fiduciary, the programmatic practices we might need to shift so that we're more inclusive, we're more accessible, and that we're really reflective of all of the unique and diverse voices in our communities. Um, it might also provide a lens on questions about how we might grow and steward assets in the best way. You know, what does an SDG outlook mean with respect to uh, explorations around responsible investing or impact investing? Um, so this idea of leaving no one behind, it, it really lives in a robust way from a data perspective, but it's actually also um, a, a great frame to think about a lot of the different work that we do as, as foundations. So next I wanna to jump to why community foundations, foundations engagement in the SDGs might matter for Canada. And some of these will sound uh, somewhat familiar. So from a data perspective, again, as I mentioned, um, there is a data gap right now in Canada. Um, and so we know that the qualitative and the quantitative insights that are being generated by civil society right now at, a, at a, an incredible scale, uh, whether that's through community foundation programs like Vital Signs or just in the way that you monitor and evaluate your programs or your grants, could play a really important role in filling this gap. Uh, and there are uh, avenues through which you can help start to share and make that data visible. We also know that there's currently at a global level, a $2.5 trillion uh, annual financing gap uh, if we wanna move the needle on all of these goals by the year 2030. Uh, so of course for foundations, this means we can play an important role in addressing this gap uh, by aligning our practices to the SDGs. Um, and that could be through our granting program, uh, it could be through the adoption of an ESG, uh, ESG approach or strategy for your endowed assets, um, or it could be through uh, exploring uh, new opportunities in the space of social finance and impact investing. And the last two I'll just speak to together, um, networks and reach. Um, so again, from a community foundation context, 92% of communities in Canada currently have access to a community foundation. Uh, and that infrastructure and the relationships, partnerships, the network of community uh, that exists within the network of community foundations uh, across the organizations you support, um, whether that's academic institutions, your relationships with municipal leaders or uh, philanthropists, is a huge asset. Um, the SDGs uh, really needs to be driven uh, from the community up. Uh, and there's a strong infrastructure in Canada already that can be mobilized uh, to help move the needle on some of these really important um, goals. And the last one before I turn to some specific examples of what it actually looks like to implement the SDGs or adopt them in your organization, I just want to quickly kind of, I guess, hypothesize on why Canada's engagement in the SDGs might matter. Um, and I've just thrown a couple of ideas up here that, that are part of conversations uh, around the SDGs now. And one of the ones that comes up most often uh, is simply the scale of um, natural spaces and coastlines in Canada. If Canada disproportionately protects its coastlines, it actually moves the needle uh, on uh, key targets around coastline protection within a global framework of the SDGs. So how can you get involved? 
So what I want to do really quickly, and I'll, I'll go through this um, at a little bit of a quicker pace because I'm keen to open up the floor for conversations. Just wanted to share a couple of ways that both through CFC and through just connecting with other community foundations, you can start thinking about what it might mean to uh, adopt or use the SDGs in the context of your own work. Um, so first and foremost, um, CFC is really at the front end uh, of rolling out a pretty robust set of learning uh, tools, resources, and experiences uh, geared towards community foundations uh, that are going to help you think about what the SDGs mean in the context of all of the different things I've tried to highlight quickly in today's, uh, in today's discussion. Um, if you're on our resource page uh, um, on the Community Foundations of Canada website, you can actually just filter by SDG. Uh, and you'll start to see all kinds of resources pop up. Um, I'll speak at the end of, uh, of today's webinar about a few that are uh, imminently on the horizon. Um, there's also a, a trove of really exciting examples of how community foundations are using tools like Vital Signs, uh, both to help understand where there might be gaps in, in their work in the community, um, also to understand uh, how their community feeds into this broader discussion about meeting the SDGs. Um, I've got a couple of examples up here. Uh, this past year, 10 community foundations across the country launched SDG-aligned vital signs reports. Uh, and there's probably 25 to 30 examples now over the last three years um, that you can again access on our website, uh, or you can reach out to us directly if you're interested in learning more about what it looks like to uh, think about aligning some of your data and your impact measurement work to the SDGs. Uh, lastly, I mentioned earlier Alliance 2030 is one of the networks that has emerged in Canada that's really helping to connect organizations that are working to advance the SDGs in Canada. Um, this is very easy to sign up to uh, and it'll help connect you to uh, currently about 26, 2700 organizations in Canada that are doing great SDG work. Um, this is becoming a, a great space to help share uh, knowledge and best practices, um, to access resources uh, that aren't just for community foundations, but to access resources that are out there talking about Canada's role uh, in the context of the SDGs, um, and to just get a sense of what's going on in your community. So you can, you can look at the, all of the different projects, all of the organizations that are in this database, uh, and really uh, whittle down into your community, into a specific sector, into a specific goal, and just see what's playing out across the country right now. So we very much encourage you to, to join Alliance 2030 if you haven't already. Uh, and then I just in italics, a few examples. Um, uh, really at the beginning of this agenda in 2016, 17, there truly were a few examples of community foundations doing great work around the SDGs. Uh, there are now many uh, from truly from coast to coast to coast uh, of all size communities. And so I just wanted to highlight a couple of examples of how community foundations are using the SDGs in their own work. So in Whistler, there's been a really exciting series of vital conversations that use the SDGs as a tool to help uh, host conversations about uh, how Whistler's doing and the future of that community. Um, and again, some of these you'll see screenshots uh, from our website. So we're in the process of actually collecting these stories uh, and making them visible uh, on our website. So also very keen to hear from, from you and your community foundation if you're doing some work in this space. Uh, the London Community Foundation has done a, a really exceptional job at using the SDGs as a framework to support its grant making and its impact and uh, measurement work. We've seen this play out also through vital signs uh, and through some great community conversations that are taking place in London. Um, the Community Foundation of Northwestern Alberta uh, partnered with the Alberta Council for Global Cooperation and has been hosting a series of uh, SDG focused conversations in communities across um, the northern part of Alberta. Uh, and for those uh, that came to the Community Foundations Conference in 2019, you'll know that Victoria is all in for the SDGs. Uh, and I continue to hear uh, a number of exciting ways that they're thinking about um, bringing the SDGs into the context of all that they do at the foundation. Uh, and uh, Fondation du Grand Montréal, the Community Foundation of Greater Montreal, celebrated its 20th anniversary as a community foundation this week. Um, and it's really used the SDGs as a compass to talk about its work, uh, to drive organizational strategy. And again, it's showing up in a lot of different ways um, across the, um, the work of the foundation. Um, Yvonne Gauthier gave a, a lovely speech to mark the 20th anniversary and, and reflected on, on the value of the SDGs as a framework in the context of, of their work as a community foundation and uh, the future of, of Montreal. So lastly, before we open up to questions, and I appreciate everyone's patience because I know there's a lot of information here, uh, I just wanted to highlight a couple of really great resources and some links you can check out if you want to continue your own learning about the SDGs uh, or want to go a little bit deeper on something specific that I said today. So again, first I mentioned registering for alliance2030.ca. 
there are regular updates, resources, uh, and new opportunities that will be posted to this website. Um, and you'll get a, new, a monthly newsletter that kind of rounds all of that up. So it's a great space to just stay on top of, uh, of the conversation. Um, I wanted to highlight a couple of reports worth reading. Um, and again, I see a couple of questions popping up, so I'm uh, almost done through the slides and then we'll open the floor. Um, the first one is the Generation SDG report. Uh, this came out in 2018. I've tried to shorten the links there, so I'll keep this on the screen just for a moment. Uh, and again, happy to share the deck at the end of today's call. Uh, but this was a great report that came out in 2018. Uh, it engaged um, Canadians of all generations, again, from across the country, to talk about this idea of what it means to implement the SDGs in Canada. And it really does a great job at looking at this from the perspective of local community. And so if you're thinking about what it means to localize the SDGs, uh, this is a great, highly accessible report uh, and one that I'd recommend downloading. Um, again, the, the federal government launched towards Canada's 2030 Agenda National Strategy. Uh, it's an interim document ahead of the formal national strategy that, again, we think will be launched this year. Uh, but it does a great job at looking at kind of just the state of play in Canada right now, uh, what some of the opportunities are that are on the horizon, uh, as well as what we can expect to see from uh, the government of Canada as it continues to move forward on its plans to uh, advance work around these goals over the next decade. Uh, and then a great report by the Brookings uh, Institution uh, called the Canadian North Star. Uh, and this was a very early report that came out uh, and actually identified uh, specifically the role of philanthropy and the work of community foundations as a kind of, um, as a, a bit of a, a bright light uh, in the early days of this agenda. And so just recognizing that this infrastructure exists in Canada uh, that reaches into um, almost all communities uh, is something that uh, folks from outside of our movement have also been thinking about and understanding how uh, they can you know, partner and work alongside uh, community foundations. Um, a shameless plug, we've been, we've been part of a, a podcast called No Little Plans that's now has, I think, six episodes online. Um, it's, again, a really great uh, and very um, accessible way to kind of understand what's happening in Canada right now uh, around the SDGs at a community level. Uh, so I would encourage you to, to subscribe to that. Uh, and we've got another episode coming out, I think, in a week's time. Uh, so something to look forward to. Uh, and lastly, maybe I can just ask you, Cindy, to, to hop back on the line and just share a little bit about what the, uh, the horizon looks like for some of CFC's Learning Institute work, because I know that there's just a ton of stuff coming up that focuses mm -hmm. on the SDGs for community foundations. Yeah, sure. Happy to do this. Um, you know, as JP mentioned, this is a real learning journey for us and, um, and really excited about what the next couple of years is going to bring in terms of how um, we engage and how we deepen our work around the SDGs, not only nationally, but locally as well. And so part of our commitment to, the, to this is help uh, community foundations elevate their learning and um, through resources and online learning and so on. So one of the things would be, uh, or we're launching that's starting February 4th is an online learning community for, um, for community foundations. So this is a virtual meetup and um, six times over the year uh, where we'll go deeper on some specific topics around the SDGs and, and just really help us to, to understand um, you know, the narrative, but also the issues and, and, and also share some examples and stories as well. So we're really excited about that. And you can, if you haven't signed up for that learning community, um, you can go to our website uh, under the Learning Institute in the events section. The other thing we'll be launching um, this spring is our SDG 101 guidebook or a primer for community foundations. And again, this is um, going to be a great tool in helping us understand why is this important for our work and, and what do we need to know. Um, there'll be some case studies of how community foundations are already working in this space, not only in Canada, but internationally as well. Um, there'll be some templates and um, you know, discussion guide around how do you share this with your board, what's your role in the community, how you can convene opportunities around this. So um, that will be available both in French and English later this spring. So we're really excited about that. Um, and as we continue to develop more SGG resources or find SGG resources and stories, we will be putting them up in our resource library. And uh, so stay tuned for that. And I think last but not least, we really want to hear your stories. Um, you know, we've been um, highly engaged with those community foundations that have been the front runner in, in this work. But as you start to um, dabble in this space and learn more, we want to hear from you and how it's working and some of the opportunities that might uh, you might be experiencing. So really excited about that.
And, and I think just to build on that, um, whether or not you've adopted the SDGs, um, we still we still want to hear your stories because there's incredible innovations taking place in your communities that are really helping to uh, address some of these challenges or some of the goals that the SDGs is uh, is working towards. And so we want to hear all of those stories as well. And so uh, please feel free to reach out to Cindy or to myself uh, and, and to help. Uh, help us better understand what's going on in your community that you're excited about. And I should say it, 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 it can be very simple. So for example, um, a community found, foundation last week shared with me how they have just gone through all their granting for the last year and aligned it to the SDGs so that they had an opportunity to look about where are they investing in their community and where there might be some gaps. So something as simple as that um, is a great story for us to, to hear and, and you know for them to start to think about. So so what's our strategy moving forward in this? So why don't we now turn it over to, to question Cindy, if that's all right. Um, again, appreciate everybody's patience. I know we went through something like 45 slides there in pretty quick succession. <laughs> so again, thank you. Um, and um, again, we're, we're still learning about the SDGs ourselves at CFC, but happy to do our best in answering any questions that you might have. Yeah. Yeah, so folks, if you have any questions, please uh, put them in the chat box. We, we've got some time and, and really um, would like to hear from you in terms of um, maybe helping clarify things or even if you have a quick story to share or an experience, that would be great. I, hopefully everybody's typing away. <laughs> JP, maybe you could share, um, while people are thinking about a question, um, some of the, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the Waterloo Global Science Initiative um, and, and some of their thinking about our um, story around the engagement of communities and why this is so important. Yeah, um, for sure. I, again, uh, WGSI has really taken uh, the approach, and it's one that, that we would agree with at CFC, that the SDGs um, needs to be driven from the community up. Uh, and they've been exploring what that means from a lot of different perspectives, from engaging municipalities, from uh, helping to convene communities around a discussion about the SDGs and asking some of the hard questions. Uh, and, and then also uh, asking questions about how, how are we building the infrastructure we need to understand how we're doing from a data and community knowledge perspective. Uh, and they've also sent a, you know, a great signal. I mentioned the Brookings Institution report, um, but in the uh, Generation SDG Summit report as well, uh, about the, the value of the work of community foundations uh, and of initiatives like Vital Signs and Communities. Um, as a pathway, one, for communities to understand how we're doing, uh, but also as something that can help support uh, our own national reporting. Uh, one of the things that we've seen play out, play out in the United States, which is quite interesting, is that in the absence of uh, national reporting to the UN on how the United States is doing, many communities are starting to step up at the municipal level with partners and saying, well, we can, we'll, we'll report, we'll tell you how we're doing. Uh, so we've seen uh, examples, uh, I think this past year, uh, New York and Los Angeles re released voluntary local reviews. Uh, and I know that there's a, an interest in understanding how the, the kind of the active infrastructure of vital signs in Canada might actually enable uh, a second level of reporting in Canada um, through a voluntary local review process. So I know that uh, Julie Wright, their executive director, has been con connecting with and meeting with community foundations and is also a great resource if you're uh, curious to learn more about what that might look like. Great, thank you. So uh, we do have a question here from Mohammed. Uh, I would like to know the cross connect connectivity between the different goals. In, in um, our experience, all the 17 goals may or may not work as standalone silos, but there's a lot of interdependency. How, we appro how, how are we approaching those interdependencies? That's a really good question. Um, I mean, I think, you know, through our work as community foundations, we, we see on a day-to-day -day basis how interconnected these goals are. You know, it's hard to, um, it's hard to move forward on uh, discussions about climate change if we're not having discussions about food security in our community or about poverty. Uh, it's, hard to, um, uh, it's hard to advance gender equality if we're not also having discussions about human rights, about a sense of belonging and inclusion, about education. So there, we, we see this play out on a day-to-day -day basis and the way that that's expressed through the SDGs, I think most clearly is really in the indicators, targets, and sub-targets themselves. 
Um, and so I, I won't be able to speak to that in, in great depth now, but I'd encourage you to take a look at um, uh, the SDG Knowledge Center, which is one of the links on the deck that we'll, we'll follow up and share, um, because then you can really look at how, um, at an international level, something like the idea of sustainable cities and communities, which is goal 11, plays out through the indicators. And you'll see in those indicators very direct links to other SDGs. Um, and so again, it, it does perhaps an imperfect job, but, but a, a decent job, and one again that, that has um, garnered agreement across 193 countries uh, at creating a data infrastructure that allows us to, to move forward on these goals in a way that's um, more cohesive than if we were to do it uh, simply in silos. And I, I would just speak on the opportunity side of that as well. We've heard from a lot of community foundations that have been using this as a convening tool that, um, that while they are kind of a, a broker, they're connected to so many in their communities that are doing great work on a specific goal or on two specific goals. Um, some of the conversations about the SDGs are the first time in, in a community's history where a lot of these organizations um, that are working on things that are interrelated but in silos are actually connecting with one another. And so it's just been a great um, opportunity to help connect some dots and deepen some relationships at the community level. All right, great. So uh, a perfect example of that <clears throat> is the uh, message um, in the chat box from Lynn. So, so thanks, Lynn, from the Kitchener Waterloo Community Foundation, where they partnered with the Waterloo Region and with WGSI and brought documentary films to their region at that um, deliberately linked to the SDGs and then hosted the panel discussions afterwards. So uh, a really simple way um, to introduce it to the community, but really create some um, engaging conversations and have some great impact as well. So thanks for sharing that, Lynn. Yeah, th thank you, Lynn, for sharing that as well. I, you know, I think between the work of the Community Foundation, uh, SDSN being located, the Sustainable Development Solutions Network located in New Waterloo, uh, groups like WGSI, kind of leadership at the municipal level, uh, Waterloo is becoming a really interesting hub and case study for um, what a kind of a collective community-led SDG leadership is going to look like. And I think um, certainly for us, we're watching closely and I know that many others are as well. So I um, really appreciate you with sharing the story. That's great. Uh, any other questions? And if not, we will wrap up in another. Oh, so there's another question here. Um, can you see that question? Um, I, I, I can't know. Okay, so it says we work uh, in hard infrastructure sector and sustainability has been an integral part of our mandate. However, when we recast it to fit into the SDGs, we found that our focus got shifted to knowledge management and knowledge enhancement, which is just an interesting comment. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I don't know if, um, if the individual that posed the question, are, are, uh, can you take someone off mute, Cindy? Yeah. I I'd be can... curious to just learn a little bit more. Okay. So Mohammed, I'm going to take you off mute. Um, there we go. And uh, so Mohammed, if you have a chance to just chat about this. Oh yes, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, it's been a very interesting uh, session, and I really liked it. Uh, I've been uh, and I'm wanting to add to this. Uh, like I said in the chat, uh, we work in hard infrastructure, like. Uh, uh, bridges, roads, bridges, and so on, buildings. And uh, we have been working uh, towards achieving sustainability in the hard infrastructure, but however, when we recasted it to, to meet the sustainable development goals, we found uh, there is a very big gap in the knowledge base of the crew, of the people who get involved in this. So when we started working on it, we find ourselves more uh, working towards knowledge enhancement of the communities than the actual work. Mm. So, the, so, so the resources uh, automatically got re redirected towards community development and knowledge enhancement rather than the actual sustainability aspect for the infrastructure, which are uh, the goal numbers six, nine, eleven. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. So, what well, my question is this: How do we tackle this uh, cross? Uh, development uh, issues, uh, wherein uh, we, we need to have a very defined approach towards it. Like you said uh, earlier, that uh, lots of people will not uh, still not updated on how to achieve these goals, especially mm -hmm. uh, if you go single track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a really good question, and um, I don't know if there's a, a single easy answer to it. But my uh, kind of as a personal opinion. Um, I, you know, I don't know if every organization needs 
uh, every organization across sectors needs to fully align to the SDGs. Um, I think I think it's interesting, and we're seeing a lot of momentum in that space. Um, I think there are going to be organizations that have very specific sets of expertise that are going to be needed to help uh, advance outcomes around specific goals, uh, and and their efforts are probably best deployed around the area in which they have those specific expertise. I know in the context of community foundations, because we we often sit at the intersection of people that have deep expertise about what it means to alleviate poverty in a community or deep expertise around um, how we can uh, you know, uh, support uh, outcomes connected to sense of belonging or inclusion or expertise around education or health. Um, because we kind of sit at the intersection of many of these relationships, uh, the SDGs does provide this really unique opportunity, as you said, to do some of that community engagement work to help uh, host new conversations um, yeah. and to help shift the dialogue so that you know organizations with deep expertise around infrastructure um, perhaps have a new set of relationships with organizations uh, in the community that might benefit from or be impacted by the work that you're doing. And so I think there's you know there's a unique role for for those people that are sitting in that kind of convening space to think about the SDGs holistically. Um, I, you know I think for individual organizations, um, being aware of what the SDGs are and how you fit into it is very important, uh, but not necessarily needing to play all of the roles um, at the same time. Yeah, I would like to add a couple of points here. You know what happened is. Uh, uh, the meeting SDGs in our sector of hard infrastructure is a tangible goal, achievable, measurable. Now, uh, when we found that the communities are not ready, especially the required resources in terms yeah. of manpower is not ready for that, mm -hmm. uh, our focus shifted to training the manpower. Now we, yeah. we, are, we work out of Ottawa, we're based yeah. in Ottawa. So we're joining hands with one of the community colleges, uh, technology colleges, wherein yeah. we're offering to upgrade the knowledge base, especially yeah. in terms of actual execution. Now, when it comes to that, uh, we're facing a big problem as to how to motivate the, the students, uh, even the, the in-service people, as to how to uh, motivate them to upgrade themselves towards meeting these goals. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it sounds like you're doing some very interesting work and, and would definitely be keen to take uh, take the question offline and have a, have a continued yeah, sure, conversation sure. if you're interested, yeah, Mohammed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks, thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, thank thanks you. so much, Mohammed. Um, mm -hmm. So um, any other questions at this point? And if not, we will wrap it up. Um, and as JP has mentioned throughout this webinar, um, we will share the, the recording of this webinar in the resource library of our website, it's communityfoundations.ca. And if you want the actual PowerPoint so you can access the links, um, we will send those out to everybody as well. And um, because there's some great resources out there and uh, we're just really excited that you're um, participating in this journey, whether it's just as an interested bystander or someone who really wants to engage in this work um, further. So stay tuned, we've got lots more coming up and uh, we look forward to you being part of this uh, learning experience with us. Oh, one, uh, so Louise, um, are municipalities exploring or adopting SDGs? JP, a quick answer to that. Uh, not everyone uniformly, uh, but there's some really great examples in Canada. We're seeing a lot of great examples across the border as yeah. well. Uh, and actually, uh, you know, I might even turn over a continued conversation to Lynn because you know, certainly yeah. uh, Kitchener, Waterloo are, are one really great example in the Canadian context of, uh, of municipalities stepping yeah. up in this space. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so thanks everyone. And um, we look forward to uh, talking to you again. And JP, thanks so much. Thanks everyone.